Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for November 28th, 2023. Well, let's take a look at what happened overnight. We had uh, Asian markets kind of mixed overnight. Um, nothing really major happened. There was um, uh, pretty modest gains and losses across the board. Uh, last night, probably the worst of it was Hong Kong down just about 1% um, overnight. European markets, however, are down across the board this morning, um, running out a little, maybe running out a, a little of that November enthusiasm to uh, just chase and buy. Um, just feeling a little bit of bearishness there. And here in the U.S. markets, we've got a mix of data as well. Uh, Dow futures at this moment are just ever so slightly higher, while S&P 500 and NASDAQ futures are just slightly lower. We have um, oil stocks uh, that were down yesterday are trying to push up just a little bit here today. So we've got oil trying to move just ever so slightly higher as we wait on that upcoming OPEC meeting. So what does all that information mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do very much appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and try and shake off a little bit of bias, see if we can figure out how the market might um, perform today and how we might want to approach it for today. Well, first off, as you take a look here at the diamonds, we did make an attempt here yesterday to break through this little resistance area in the chart. Um, I know the market just desires so badly to um, break this um, annual high here in the Dow, but we're just struggling here just a little bit with an overbought condition. Um, obviously, this is a very, very parabolic move to the upside with really not much of rest points in between. So it's not out of the question that it has to rest here for a little while. But if the bulls can find that inspiration today in earnings and economic data, then perhaps we push on through this level here and maybe we start reaching up into these levels up here to see if we can test um, the annual high. Uh, remember, this isn't the all-time high. The all-time high, we've still got a, quite a ways to go to make that all-time high here in the diamonds. This would just be the high for 2023. So keep a close eye on that. But if the bears were to find inspiration, as I mentioned yesterday, any kind of bearish push um, on the day could push us back down. We, as you notice in here, there, there really isn't a whole lot of price support underneath this level until we come back into here. So coming back into this support level would not be all that much of a surprise um, if that were the case. Um, breaking down through there is where we'd start to have a little bit of concern in the market. If we take a look at our moving averages here, we are still so very strongly separated from our 50 and 200 day moving average. If you'll notice over here, this big extension that we made over here where we stretched, notice on this one that the 50 day was already turning up and we stretched up and you can see the, the dramatic uh, pullback that occurred um, as a result of that overextension. What you'll want to notice here is that 50 day moving average is barely moving off of the flat line here. So this is an extreme overextension in the diamonds and we want to be watching that carefully. If the bears were to grab a hold of this, could be a little bit of a painful pullback um, if that um, if they got inspired. And I'm not saying they will, but if they do get inspired, we'll want to watch carefully for that and be prepared. Let's take a look at our SPY. SPY also had a little bit of um, uncertainty yesterday and a little bit of a spinning top. Actually, almost a little bit more of a little 
um, shooting star up there, tiny shooting star. And we're seeing just a little bit of extra selling here this morning. Struggling with this little resistance in the chart. Um, S&P 500 wants to break through and they want to reach up here. So if the bulls can push through, you'll notice I added this um, line in here. This is um, a trend that runs all the way back over here till, uh, to October of last year. And we have a few little outliers in this area, but you'll notice that we've pushed back up and we're testing right here. It's kind of interesting that we've got a little bit of a double layer of resistance right there on the S&P 500. And um, if we can push on through here to the bullish side, well, we're gonna have to test and break through those areas and then push up here to attack the uh, 2023 high. Remember, we'll have to go considerably higher if we're going to um, test the all-time high here in the S&P 500. Let's take a look um, if the bears were to find that inspiration. You can see it really wouldn't be that big of a stretch if the bears did activate a little bit. We'd be down here testing this support area of the chart and if that were to fail then you could see that possibility that we could come a little bit lower right down into here to find that next level of price support let's take a look at our cues our nasdaq has been the strongest of the indexes by far broke through the 2023 high we still got a ways to go to deal with the 2024 high but as you can see a um, little bit of a shooting star type pattern in there. Um, actually, following uh, Thursday is a little doji, another shooting star, a little bit of pressure showing up, um, big tech. Um, still doing the majority of the lifting yesterday um, on its own. The rest of the um, NASDAQ wasn't doing all that well. But if you look um, right in here, we're coming down into this support and we might be testing that here this morning, at least in the pre-market. Right now we're starting to see a little bit of bullish action here trying to push off of that support area. We'll see if that holds through the morning after we start getting earnings and economic reports. Just keep in mind that um, if we were to drift down through there, uh, maybe the next level of price support would be down in here. And that's not a real strong price support, as you can see. There is a little bit right here that would help quite a bit. Yeah, going back to there and we can see that little bit of price support maybe coming in to hold us there. If the bulls find that inspiration here in the chart, well, let's first see if we can start popping through some of these wick highs um, in the queues and then um, up in here to test that resistance. And we gotta go back over here to uh, 2022 and 2021 to find that next resistance level in the chart. If we were to take a look at our IWM, boy, IWM continues to struggle here quite a bit. Um, not a whole lot of love or support here in the Russell. And that's just simply because there's no tech giants in here to continue to influence this higher. If you take a look, this is a pretty substantial level of price resistance that runs across the chart here. And we've been banging our head against it trying to break through. But the good news is we're coming into a trend. This is more structured than what we're seeing in the other indexes. So it is entirely possible with this rest and consolidation that we're seeing in here, if we can find that bullish inspiration, maybe we can pop through here uh, now and run back up to retest this resistance where we came in and well, we ran up there and just absolutely reversed um, at this next level of price resistance. If the bears, however, find inspiration here, um, well, there's no reason to believe that we couldn't just maintain this consolidation, stay in here, or that we have that little bit of a dip to come back down to test this level of price support in the chart. So kind of keep a close eye on that in the Russell. Uh, when it comes to the technicals here of the Russell, it's still pretty dismal. Um, we're up above our 50 day moving average and our 50 day moving average is starting to flatten out. Short term moving average is coming up, which is nice to see, but we're already struggling with a 200 day and just keep in mind, we're still below that 500 day moving average. Not a good situation here yet in the Russell, but it is improving. I do like the possibility that this in 
inverted head and shoulders pattern could go ahead and perform. There's the break of the neckline and then we'll see if we can finally push on through this area of the chart to come out and test that next level of price resistance. Let's take a look um, at our VIX. Our VIX yesterday, we saw a little bit of fear popped up in there uh, just initially with a bit of selling. But as normal, we saw uh, big tech um, continuing to drive higher and the fear dropped. And we're right back down here. We didn't quite make it down to the low of uh, Friday, but um, just kind of testing this support area in the, here in the chart around 12, 13 handles in the VIX, keeping in mind that uh, the next level down would be all the way down into here around 11 and a half handles in the VIX if the bulls continue to show no fear in the market. If the bears um, engage a little bit, well then let's look up here around the 13, 14 area um, of the VIX for that next um, resistance level in the chart. And then if we take a look at our T2122, um, let's remember the T2122 is not a predictor of price action. Okay, T2122 is merely, if you can read that through all of the lines in here, it's the four week new high, new low ratio. And what it does is it tells us how many stocks are making new highs, how many stocks are making new lows. And what it does is shows us um, in between levels of 100 and zero um, areas where we're overbought and oversold. And we continue to rest up here. We had a little bit of selling yesterday that brought us down initially below this um, oversold range up here. And um, we continue to linger up in this area, uh, very, very stretched out in this market. And um, I, I want you to recognize, I can pull this back as far as you wanna go. There's never been a time that T2122 went over 100, it can't, because it's a ratio of all the stocks. And um, we have always seen, uh, we can linger up here for a period of time, and then we eventually sell off. So how long will we linger up here? I don't know, but we will wanna keep in mind that the longer we linger up here, um, the more um, risk there is for that um, move that kind of pushes us down in the market that could be, well, a little bit painful for those uh, continuing to rush in and buy um, as we stretch out this market. But that being said, I see nothing in the price action that suggests we have to pull back um, at the moment. So let's watch that closely. If the bulls can find that inspiration here today, then every reason to believe that they can push on higher here in the indexes. Um, we'll see if they can um, um, really get something going with the um, earnings or economic data today to do that. If the bears find inspiration, um, that's where we have to worry a little bit because we have this big open space in here where the bears could really push us down for a period of time. And unfortunately, um, what we've seen a lot of times is that move can be pretty substantial and pretty quick when it begins to happen. And you can imagine a lot of folks along the market and all of a sudden we start to see some bearishness in it. Everybody runs for the door. Everyone runs for the exit at the same time. And that could be the circumstance here that we'll want to be paying attention to. Let's take a look at our T2108. Now T2108 is the percentage of stocks above the 40 day moving average. And you can see in this chart that yesterday a little bit flat. Um, just didn't do much yesterday. And that was kind of expected just simply because um, we're, we're waiting on the GDP, we're waiting on a PCE number, and there was probably a lot of folks traveling home yesterday from their holiday and just wasn't a whole lot of volume in the market overall. Um, if we look right through here, we've got a little tiny bit of price resistance right here in the chart. If we can break through that, then we'll start moving up here into these next 
next levels. Now I will warn you that once we reach somewhere between 65 and 75 percent of the stocks above the 40-day moving average that we are at a very extreme um, overbought condition in the market and then we typically see that pullback so kind of keep that in mind if we keep stretching this market to the upside there is some danger in doing that because we really haven't left any support levels behind to protect us if we start to fall um, if we do, however, begin to pull back, just note that it's not that big a deal that we've got some pretty good support areas here in the chart, some across here and some across here that could catch us. So just a little bit of relief um, in a pullback would probably be healthy for the market. And then if we take a look at our T2107, well, we're showing that T2107 also a little bit flat on the day, um, turned just a tiny little bit lower, found some price resistance here in the chart, and we just didn't have the energy yesterday to push on through. If the bulls can push on through, let's look and see if we can break this resistance and um, push up into some next um, levels of price resistance in the chart. One of the reasons this is lagging behind so much is again the influence of um, the Russell which no one seems to be caring about uh, small caps right now. It's all about big tech and um, it's lagging way behind here in the market and that's kind of acting like a boat anchor. We're kind of dragging that around as we zoom up in the NASDAQ. So um, watch that carefully. If the bears were to find um, um, inspiration here to push then uh, back down here. Remember this is just the percentage of stocks above the 200 day moving average. So uh, just keep a close eye on that. Let's take a look at our um, economic calendar here for today. Our economic calendar does have a few things that we'll want to be paying attention to here this morning. First off, we're going to have Case Shiller home prices. Um, they are looking for Case Shiller um, prices to decline just a little bit. So keep, kind of keep that in mind. Um, um, and that would be a good thing for inflation if those prices come down a little. Watch that carefully. Um, also expecting here in the housing price index for a little bit of a decrease in those housing prices. So watch that. Uh, consumer confidence is expected to come in just a little bit lighter than last time. Keep, a, keep an eye on that. That's one of our more notable reports here today. And then, you know, here come the Fed speakers. Uh, we've got a parade of Fed speakers here today. We've got Goolsby, Walter, Bauman, and then we've got Barr here later in the day. We've got some bond auctions to be paying attention to. Of course, that Richmond Fed manufacturing number is expected out, and it's uh, uh, likely going to be a terrible number, much like our Dallas Fed um, number was. Our manufacturing is still in major decline. Market doesn't seem to care about that, though. Um, keep in mind, as we move forward, it, it really is possible that we have another just a choppy uh, go nowhere day um, because everyone's going to be thinking about this GDP number um, on Wednesday and then of course we no more than get through that and we're going to have the Fed's favorite number and that is personal incomes and outlays. So two big numbers that could really influence the direction of the market this week and we're still going to have to wait for it tomorrow morning. Let's take a look at um, our um, earnings calendar. And our earnings calendar has a few more uh, stocks on here that can help us today. I'm going to run through these really quickly. Um, AZEK will be reporting today. It's been a nice upside move. Uh, BMO will be on that list today. CRWD will be reporting today. We've got um, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. We've got um, um, Intel, oh, wait a second, is Intel, I think it's, I think I've got a, I think it's INTU, um, Intuit, there we go, Intuit is going to be reporting today, um, I missed, there we go, fix that on the blog real quick, um, um, Intuit is reporting, um, LESL will be reporting today, we're going to hear from NetApp, we're going to get a report from PDD, 
Ooh, big pop there in PDD. To the upside, we've got SPLK that's going to report today and W Day um, kind of wrapping up the notables for today. So keep an eye on those reports as we progress. How about we take a look at our um, Oops, we've got our economic calendar and our earnings calendar out of the way. So how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, well, you know what I'm going to ask. If you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube, click that bell icon when it pops up, when it, um, uh, when it, so you can be notified every time I post a video. And then if you could do me that favor and leave a brief comment on the channel, it's the engagement with the video that really helps the algorithm show these videos to more folks and helps the channel grow. Thank you so much for everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly, truly appreciate it. And also remember, you're, you're more than welcome and I'd really appreciate it if you shared these videos out on your social media feed. That helps them reach more folks as well. Let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up. And remember, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You've got to do your own due diligence. Make sure you're following your trade rules and your trade guidance. Um, never ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas. Follow your risk tolerance rules every time you plan a trade. By the way, in planning, um, I just want to remind everyone that I am doing a public e-learning tonight. 8 p.m. Eastern, just go over to the Hit and Run Candlesticks, hitandruncandlesticks.com. Right at the top of the page, uh, when you uh, get there, there is a free public trading room. Um, uh, we will be there at 8 p.m. Eastern. You're all welcome. And we're going to be talking about some of the things that you can do to improve your trading heading into 2024. And I'd love to see you there tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern. Let's take a look at um, some of these stocks setting up and uh, first off let's take a look at ccj now one of the things we've been uh, talking about in rwo for some time is this run that's been happening here in um, um, uranium stocks and just really strong moves to the upside and it looked like yesterday um, CCJ might actually pop out of that level looks like we're getting a little bit of pressure here this morning in the pre-market pushing back on it but I do think CCJ is worth keeping an eye on it's going to be kind of dependent I think on what happens with the US dollar you can see the US dollar gapping up just a little bit this morning but now pulling back if the US dollar continues to weaken I would look for all commodities prices to uh, move higher and uranium um, is um, obviously a commodity so you could also take a look at um, uranium plays in UUUU nice little consolidating move in there that possibility that we might find that um, bullish um, energy here to push on up and retest that um, most recent high we've got um, UEC that is in a beautiful upside pattern kind of resting here in this chart that possibility that could push on through to the upside and ura another uranium play looking very bullish broke through resistance up here as you can see um, any rest consolidation in here sets up that next opportunity to the upside in uranium. So a weakening dollar would help that a bunch. Speaking of a weakening dollar, take a look at some of the mining stocks out there. Um, GDX is the, um, the majors here, and we had a nice move up here to test this resistance yesterday. Broke this little downtrend here in the chart. You can see this morning we're getting a little bit of a pop and drop here in the pre-market we'll see if that weakening dollar um, here this morning is enough to continue to make that move happen but uh, GDX um, trying to make that move and break through some resistance so I keep an eye on some of the miners here take a look at uh, Newmont also breaking that downtrend uh, still got some work here to do some convincing for me um, to get too strong but you can see stocks like Berry Gold and, and there's quite a few out there 
they're showing some moves uh, in the market and, and one of the reasons we saw gold make that big move here yesterday breaking through resistance now a little rest or pullback sets up a pretty good opportunity there we also saw the same in silver silver made a big stretching move here the last few days and one of the things you want to make note of is that break of that downtrend so any rest consolidation or pullback in here would set up that next um, opportunity to stretch on higher if that dollar is going to continue to weaken so keep an eye on those um, you could also um, also take a look at some of the junior miners in here uh, breaking through the resistance in the chart obviously breaking through that downtrend any rest consolidation or pullback in here would set up that next opportunity to the upside in some of those juniors so watch that carefully um, I had mentioned Chewy yesterday and I was holding Chewy yesterday I'm not exactly sure what happened here on this but this guy stopped me out so just like everybody I don't I don't win every trade um, um, had kind of an unfortunate pattern here where all of a sudden it just went south and stopped me out but that's that's the name of the game um, and um, all we can do is um, play the risks that we um, have in the market and um, not every trade is going to be a winner, but um, this is now off my off that list. I'm not interested in Chewy here for a while until that recovers and starts looking a little better. However, I still have some interest here in LVS. LVS holding in this um, little upside trend had a little bit more selling than I wanted to see there, pushing back down. But there is some price support. There is a trend in here. If we can find that inspiration, that bullishness here in the market, there may be that opportunity for that to move higher keep a close eye on that um, you might want to be keeping an eye on um, stocks like PayPal PayPal tried to get moving here yesterday it did slip beyond this trend um, as you can see we've got this interesting little uh, rising pattern in here a little bit of support in there and we tried to get moving yesterday let's see if that can start perking back up here in the chart uh, might be worth keeping an eye on that and I think another that um, would be kind of interesting after a little rest this has gone too far too fast um, SQ just give me a little bit of consolidation a little bit of rest in here and then I'd be looking for that opportunity maybe there in SQ to continue on higher um, take a look at SKLZ SKLZ is one that I um, uh, talked about last week it did pop my alert to the upside uh, moving on up it's struggling here just a little bit not real uh, not a whole lot of energy but we're kind of seeing the overall market right now come into a little bit of lethargicness um, uh, trying to find that energy to keep moving and, and maintain that inspiration to the upside but watch SKLZ if it can rest in here consolidate in here I would still look for more upside um, on that chart looking pretty darn good um, if we were to take a look at Alcoa Alcoa still potentially setting up here a little bit of weakness um, in there yesterday we gapped lower but tried to push on higher Alcoa is another one of those commodities that if the dollar is going to weaken we might see that move on higher here in the market worth keeping a close eye on um, you guys know I've talked about TLT and I'm expecting at some point in time that there's going to be a pretty big surge of buying here in TLT now and just kind of a um, any kind of a short squeeze a rally had a good pop yesterday here to the upside as you can see kind of a morning star pattern here in TLT keep a close eye on those bonds what we're seeing this morning is bond yields are creeping up just a little tiny bit this morning but they were doing that yesterday and then they went ahead and softened so watch that carefully TLT has been coming up out of this bottom if you look real close we've got that inverted head and shoulders pattern pattern look into that chart uh, neckline would be up through here we've broken through and we've even held it now as support so keep an eye on that this is also a break of that downtrend I think TLT is worth keeping an eye on and you might also take a look at um, stocks like BND BND um, also really really nice uh, moving up break of that downtrend again we've got that kind of sloppy inverted head and shoulders pattern but it is there and there's our neckline 
through here and we're holding that neckline as support continuing to show a little bit of upside and there is another one of those morning star type patterns to see if that can push on through to the upside so bond yields uh, dropping and we could yeah. soon see um, a big rush to to buy some bonds and um, see this push on higher so watch that close so with that everyone hey i want to wish you all a fantastic day i want to wish you great results in your trading thank you so much for listening today i appreciate it thanks so much for your kind support to the to the channel y'all take care be safe and I'll see you right back here, bright and early Wednesday morning. Wish you all the best.